Section 12.2, surface area of prisms and cylinders. Uh, just a quick forewarning, there are going to be a fair amount of formulas on this section, so have uh, your notebooks handy ready to write all of those down. All right, first off, we're going to look at prisms. Uh, in, a, in a regular rectangular prism, like we see on the left, we have a base, which is our, our bottom uh, shape, uh, the height, which is our length up and down, and then we can also talk about lateral faces. That's going to be any face on the side that's not the top or the bottom. We also have oblique prisms. Here we see an oblique triangular prisms, a prism. Oblique really just means uh, we're, we're slanted, we're not straight up and down. So we have a real height, which is the distance from uh, one of the top face to the uh, to the bottom, so it's perpendicular. It's a, we call that the real height. There's also the slant height, which is the distance from a point on the base uh, to the point on the top triangle that we see there. All right, first formula that we see is the lateral area of a prism. The lateral area, which we'll call L, is equal to the perimeter times the height. The perimeter is the perimeter of a base, either the top or the bottom or one of the sides, whatever base we decide to use, it's the perimeter times the height. So here we are asked to find the lateral area of a rectangular, a regular hexagonal prism. Excuse me. Uh, so we know first off that a hexagon has six sides. So when we see that hexagonal base, we can find the perimeter of that base easily by taking 5 times the number of sides. Since it's regular, all of the sides are equal. So our perimeter is going to be 5 times 6, or 6 times 5, 6 sides times our side length of 5. So that's going to be 30 centimeters. We're going to multiply that by our height then to get our lateral area, which is going to equal 360 when we multiply. So our area, or lateral area, is going to be 360 square centimeters. Here we're asked to find the lateral area of a, rect, uh, of a regular octagonal prism. We're told that the side of one of those, uh, well, of one of the octagons, there is three. So we know the perimeter is going to be equal three times, since we have eight sides, it's going to be equal to 3 times 8, which will be 24 centimeters. We can then multiply that by our height, because our lateral area equals perimeter, which is 24, times height, which is 9, to give us a lateral area of 216 centimeters squared. Another one of our formulas is going to be the surface area of a right prism. The surface area is going to be equal to twice the area of our base plus the perimeter times the height. So here we see uh, a right rectangular prism. So we plug in those numbers to our formula. We know to find the area of the, the base, we have 4 times 16. We multiply that by 2 uh, as per the formula. Our perimeter, then, of that base is going to be our 4 plus 16 from those two sides plus another 4 and 16 from their opposite sides for 40 times the height, which we see is 9. Multiplying that all out, our surface area is going to end up being 488 units squared. They don't give us units, uh, but we know our units have to be squared when we're dealing with area. Here we are asked to find the surface area of this right prism. Uh, we see that we have a triangle with three sides all equal to six, so we have an equilateral triangle. So we know we can use the formula for an equilateral triangle to find its area. So we know the area is going to equal one-fourth times the side squared times the square root of three. So we can plug in six for our side there. Uh, when we square that six, it'll be 36 times one-fourth is going to give us nine square roots of three for an area. Um, we can also find the perimeter of that base fairly easily. Uh, we know all three sides are equal to 6. Just add them up. Uh, 6 added up 3 times or 3 times 6 is going to be 18. And then we know the height is 10. 
So we plug those into our formula. And when we multiply all that out, we're going to end up with a surface area of 211.2, again, units squared. Right, here we are asked to find the surface area of this triangular prism here. So we know surface area is going to equal 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height. Um, the area of that triangle we know is going to be 1 half base times height. So the area of, that, of our base is going to be 1 half of 8 times 12. When we multiply that out, the area is going to equal 48. Uh, the tricky part about this problem is finding the uh, finding the perimeter. We need to know the other two sides of this triangle before we find the perimeter. But we know uh, that our altitude here is going to uh, bisect our the side of our base since these two angles here uh, have to be equal to each other because uh, because it's a regular prism. So then we can use the Pythagorean theorem because each one of these little parts here is going to be 6. So we can plug that in. 6 squared plus 8 squared has to equal our hypotenuse squared. Uh, so 36 and 64 is going to give us 100. So these other two sides are both going to be equal to 10, which means our perimeter is going to equal 32. So to find surface area, we're going to have twice the area of our base, so 2 times 48 plus our perimeter, which we just found out to be 32, times our height, which is 10. So 2 times 48 is going to give us 96, plus 320 is going to give us an answer of 416, for our 416 units squared for our surface area. Right, another one of the formulas that we have are uh, for the area of a cylinder. We have a lateral area for a cylinder, which is just equal to 2 pi times the radius times the height. So if we look, the lateral area is really just uh, our circumference times our height. So we find out the distance around that circle, we multiply by the height. Our surface area, on the other hand, is going to be our lateral area plus twice the area of our base. Uh, so we see here in symbols, L plus 2B, or 2 pi R times H plus 2 pi R squared. Really all that means is it's our circumference times height plus uh, twice the area of our base because we have two bases that we're adding together there. Right. We also have uh, the surface area of a right cylinder, which is going to be twice the base plus the circumference times our height, um, which is really, again, just our 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Uh, so basically that same formula just rewritten there. So if we're given our right cylinder here, with a radius of 12 and a height of 4.5, we can just plug those in to find our surface area. We know the surface area is going to equal 2 pi times our radius squared, so times 12 squared, plus 2 pi times our radius times our height. Plug those in and multiply. Uh, we're going to get 288 pi plus 108 pi, so we get 396 pi, which we know is approximately 1,244.07 units squared. All right, here we're asked to find the missing length. Uh, if the surface area of a right cylinder is 925.2 and we have a radius of 9.5, find the height. Again, we're just going to plug that into our, uh, into our formula. We know the surface area is twice the area of the base plus the circumference times the height, so just plug that in. Uh, we can draw a picture. We know our radius is 9.5. We know the area is 925.2, so... 925.2 is going to equal 2 times pi times our radius squared plus 2 times pi times our radius times our height. 
So we're going to get 925.2 equal to 180.5 pi plus 19 pi times our height. So when we subtract off 180.5 times pi from our 925.2, we're going to get 358.143 approximately equal to 19 pi times h. Divide both by 19 pi. H is going to be approximately 6. Again, remember to keep as many decimal points in our calculators as possible, as possible or uh, multiply by pi at the last possible moment so that we don't end up with any rounding error. Lateral area and surface area of a cylinder. Find the lateral area in the surface area of the cylinder. Round to the nearest tenth. So here on the right we have a cylinder with a radius of 14 feet and a height of 18 feet. So we plug that into our formula. We know the lateral area is going to be 2 pi times our radius times our height. So we just plug that in 2 times pi times 14 times 18. All right, that's going to be approximately 1,583.4. Uh, then we know the surface area is our lateral area plus uh, twice the area of one of our bases. We know the two bases are going to be equal to each other. Uh, that's why we're multiplying it by 2. So we already found our letter area, 15 uh, 1,583.4. So we add that to 2 times par, pi times 14 squared, or 2 times uh, 196 times pi. And that's going to be approximately 2,814.9. 2, Uh, so again, since they have feet, both of these should be, uh, the units should be feet squared or square feet, as they, they say here. All right, here we are asked to find the lateral area and the surface area of the cylinder. We want to round to the nearest tenth. So we know to find the lateral area, that's just going to be 2 times pi times our radius times our height. So we're going to have an L of 2 times pi times our radius, which is 12, times our height, which is 20. When we plug that in, uh, 2 times 12 we know is 24. 24 times 20 is going to be approximately 400, or not approximately, it's going to be 480. 480 times pi is approximately uh, 1,508. Uh, that's going to be feet squared. Surface area we know is just our lateral area, plus uh, twice the area of a base, so we've got our 1508, uh, 1508 feet squared plus our area times 2, so 2 pi r squared, so 2 times pi times 12 squared, which is 144. So we've got 1508 plus uh, 288 pi, which is going to be approximately. 2,412.7. So if we look, that's going to end up being answer A. Excellent. Here we're asked to find the missing direct, uh, dimensions. A soup can is covered with the label shown here. Looks mighty similar to another soup company, I know. Uh, what is the radius of this soup can? So we can find uh, the area of this uh, soup can pretty easily, uh, the lateral area, because we know it's just going to be 8 times 15.7. Uh, but we also know the lateral area is equal to 2 times pi times our radius times our height. Here we know the height's going to be 8. Uh, so we know our lateral area is going to be 125.6 when we multiply our 8 by 15.7. And then we plug that in uh, to our formula. We know 2 times pi times our radius times our height of 8 should equal that 125.6. Uh, so we know 16 pi times r is going to equal our area. Divide both by 16 pi. And our radius is going to be approximately 2.5 inches. Here we're asked to find the diameter of a base of a cylinder if the surface area is 480 pi square inches and the height is 8 inches. So we know 
the area or surface area is our lateral area or 2 pi r h plus uh, twice the area of our basis so plus 2 pi r squared and we're looking for r from this they tell us the surface area is 480 pi and that's going to equal um, again 2 pi times our radius times our height which is 8 plus 2 pi r squared so what I noticed right away when we have the r term and the r squared is that we have a quadratic here sure there's some pi's involved but that's those are still just our our regular numbers um, so we want to get all of it equal to zero so we solve for zero here so we have to subtract our 480 pi and then I reorder so that it's in descending order according to our uh, exponents so we're gonna have 2 pi r squared plus 16 pi r plus 480 pi and from here I can plug this right into the quadratic equation if I want to uh, but I like to make things simple before I plug it into the quadratic formula I notice that each one of these terms has a 2 pi in it so we can factor out 2 pi uh, from each of them first so we're gonna be left with r squared plus 8r plus 240 just to get those numbers down a little bit uh, and now that looks much more manageable to plug into the quadratic equation our quadratic formula so we take right that right there we're gonna have negative b which is negative 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared so 64 minus 4 times a times c Oh, excuse me um, this should have been a negative uh, 240 because we had to subtract 480 right here 480 pi so this should have been a negative this which means that 240 is a negative right there uh, don't forget to make that change otherwise we will end up with a very uh, messed up radical there so we've got 64 minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is negative 240 if our c would have been a positive 240 uh, then we're going to end up with a negative in the square root, which we know doesn't work. Uh, so now we'll have a positive with our negative 4 times negative 240. That's all over 2a, which is just 2 times 1, which is 2. We plug that into our calculator. We're going to get uh, a negative answer for r of uh, negative 20. We're going to get a positive 12. Uh, we're going to use the positive, uh, but we know this was since our we have r squared this is just what r equals so r equals 12 we don't want the radius we want the diameter so we know our diameter is always twice our radius multiply our 12 by 2 to get 24 inches for a diameter All right, that's uh, the end of this lecture we have a homework check for tomorrow uh, be sure to get that uploaded and have a wonderful day